In the past, I was predominantly a, a flower gardener. I did grow vegetables and I did grow herbs, but I didn't have a quote, air quote, herb garden. And uh, some of the things that I considered weeds, now I realize are herbs and they're beneficial herbs. And these are edible plants. And one of these I wanted to show you, or actually two of these I wanted to show you, are in the, there's a car going by, let me be quiet for a second. These two plants, well my goodness, look here who we have. We have a chicken. We have a chicken who decided to come see me. How about that? Most of the time I, I grew culinary herbs rather than medicinal herbs. So I want to show you two plants in the genus Lamium. Uh, so I am a botanist. It helps to know the genus names. It helps to know the scientific names of plants. As I was saying before the rooster crowed, it helps to know the scientific names of plants because so many different plants have the same common name. Like, for instance, you can find buttercups, and you don't know what you're talking about when you're talking about buttercups. I'm going to show you a couple of these plants. This first plant I'm going to show you is called purple dead nettle. All right, maybe some, some places it's called red dead nettle. And dead nettle in that, not because it's got the stinging hairs like nettle, but actually because it does not have the stinging hairs like nettle. Let me get down on this. See this? I'm gonna, down, I'm gonna get down on the ground. Yeah, right here next to it, so I can put the camera down low, and you can see more of the how it looks from the ground. Okay. This area on the plant. This is why it's called purple dead nettle, because of those top leaves, and they are purple. The flowers. I think the flowers look kind of like little dragons. Maybe not. See that? They're they're close apart. They have a. I mean, let's see how this is arranged on the stem. Let's take this apart. A very very little very little short petiole on the leaves. You see that? They're right right up on the right up on the stem. Little bitty short petiole. Okay, the petiole is the stem on the leaf. Being a botanist, I forget sometimes that everybody doesn't know these terms that I use, and I apologize for that. I'm not trying to be be snooty or anything. This is just what the way I was taught, and it helps to know the names of the plant parts. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is this is purple dead nettle. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, it can be found in just about every state in the, in the U.S., the lower U.S. Not in the upper north, not in like the um, oh, the Dakotas or Minnesota, and it doesn't like the really, really arid, dry areas like Nevada and Arizona and New Mexico. But just about everywhere else you can find this. It's edible. You can put it in salads, the leaves. I don't know about the flowers. I imagine the flowers would be edible too, but the leaves are edible. You can either put them in salads or you can cook them and it is medicinal. Now look this up and I'm going to use the words that were used and then I'll define them. Okay, it's astringent, which means it tightens tissues. Like if you've got big pores, you know, and you're going to put an astringent lotion on it to close up your pores. Diaphoretic means it causes sweating. A diuretic, when most of you already knows what diuretic is, it causes you to pee a lot. It increases urination. A purgative means it's a laxative. And septic is it stops bleeding. So you can crush up the leaves and you can put it on an open wound to stop the bleeding. And that's pretty much it on this. So this is purple dead nettle, Lamium purpureum. This is the sibling of purple dead nettle. This is also in the genus Lamium. But this, instead of being Lamium purpureum, this is Lamium amplexicali. Uh, this is called henbit. So it's 
the same genus as the purple dead nettle, but it's a different species name. So where purple dead nettle is Lamium purpureum, this is Lamium implexicale. And it is growing in a flower pot. I couldn't find it in the ground. It's an early spring, winter annual, and it's kind of hard to find it this kind of year. Now, implexicale means clasping, which means, so we're in the Lamium purpureum, in the dead nettle, the leaves had a little stem. These leaves don't have a stem. See that they're attached, that they're attached directly, directly to the, to the stem. See that? So that's why it's called Implexicale. It's a weird name, but that term just means clasping. And you'll find that in other plants too. So here we go, get back over to this one. The leaves, um, excuse me, the flowers on this are a little bit larger than on uh, purple dead nettle. And this is not purple dead nettle, this is henbit. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Where where the purple dead nettle didn't grow in some states, I looked at a map and this grows in every state, uh, I guess the continental, what do you call it, um, the lower U.S. I, the map did not include Alaska, it did not include Hawaii, so I'm not, I'm not sure if they grew there or not. But it does grow in every state except perhaps Alaska and Hawaii. And again, like the purple dead nettle, it is edible, both uh, the leaves, both like in a salad or cooked. And there are no poisonous look-alikes, so that's a good thing. You're not going to mistake this plant for anything else. Uh, it, as far as eating it, it's high in it's high in iron and vitamins. Now it has some different medicinal uses from the purple dead nettle. Now it is also a diaphoretic, so it causes sweating, just like the uh, purple dead nettle did. And it's also a laxative. So where the other one said it was a purgative, this one says it's a laxative. Basically, that means the same thing. This plant is good for rheumatism. It's called an anti-humatic. Uh, it's an excitant and a stimulant. It means the same thing. It's a febrifuge. So the febrifuge means it uh, reduces fever. So it's a good plant to have. So. When you see this growing in, in your, your yard or in your garden, don't, don't cut it down. It, it is an annual, so it will reproduce some seeds, but it's something that you want to have. And I think this is one of those good plants that we all should know about. It's not just a weed. This is a good, it's a good edible plant that we all need to be growing in our gardens. And don't forget, no matter where you are or what you're doing, I always look at the world around you with absolute wonder because you might just find something wonderful. Like this beautiful, beautiful flower. Who knew this thing was so pretty? They look like little orchids. Aren't they beautiful? Bye y'all. See you next time.